Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We are delighted to be joining you today with a special afternoon live stream direct from Science World. I wanted to begin by gratefully acknowledging Science World is located on the traditional unceded Squamish, Musqueam and tsleil village site of Sanok. Today, we have an amazing show about electricity. My name is Brian, but I am not working here alone. I am joined by some amazing people, uh, including our friends from BC Hydro. We have Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Michelle, and I'm from BC Hydro's community team. And we have a really cool job where we get to provide energy coaching to people across BC. So today, I'm going to be Coach Michelle. Coach Michelle, it's great to have the coach here. Uh, we would love to know where you are joining us from. Uh, we know down in the comments there is an uh, opportunity to put in comments. Uh, we'll be asking some questions later on. If you have questions for us throughout the show, be sure to type those in. Uh, we'll try and answer them during the show and we'll also have a time at the end of the show to check in there. If you're joining us with your class, feel free to uh, decide amongst the class things you want to put in there. Uh, we also love reactions, and I know on Facebook Live they have fun little emojis and reaction things, so if you want to react, if you want to add any of those in, feel free to do so. Uh, a few other people I wanted to introduce to you. Running all these cameras, transitioning between things, making the wonderful computer things happen, we have our technician, Jeff. Uh, re responding to your chat and making sure we know all of the good things going on. He's actually going to be helping us with a little game show later on, putting up some poll questions. We have Fabio. Hey, Fabio. Hello. Uh, we also have my friend Madeline, who's joining us today, just to watch out. And we're very careful in this space. You'll see on the different studio things, and even when Michelle and I need to work on something together, we keep our masks on. We want to keep our six feet of social distance. We're always being nice and safe and in control as we go through. Fabio, has anyone responded? Do we know where anyone is joining us from today? So we have folks from Nanaimo, Vancouver, Oak Ridge. Nanaimo, Oak Vancouver, Ridge. Oak Ridge. Where else? Richmond, Whistler. Richmond, Whistler. Nice. Abbotsford, yeah. Also Abbotsford out there. Uh, I'm glad we've got some Vancouver Island people joining us. I am actually from Courtney originally myself, so yay, Vancouver Island. Uh, all right, I have a question for all of you. And this is going to be something to ponder. Where are some ways, what are some ways that we make electricity? What are some sources of energy that could be used to generate electricity? So if you have an idea about that, you can add that into the chat as we go through. Uh, I had a clever idea here. I don't know if this is reachable or doable, but Michelle, next to you, there's a big light. And I think on the back of it, there might be a little switch. So if we turn that on, <laughs> I... I love to see how we can adjust things. Let's see. Oh, look at that. You are lit in a, in a stylish and almost art deco way. <laughs> Cinematography and science coming together all at once. Um, tell us a little bit there, Fabio. Have we got any suggestions from people about ways you can generate electricity? Sources of energy? All right, so we got from wires from water. From wires from water. Interesting, solar we're going to be talking about. Ah, solar. I like the idea of solar energy. In fact, some of you may have one of these in your classroom. A really simple example of how you can use solar power to generate some electrical energy, just on the top there. Uh, we were talking a little bit about wind energy. Are you ready to try something with us, Michelle? I think so. Michelle has been very brave because she's joining us at Science World, and we have a lot of exciting demonstrations we like to try with different things. Uh, one of them just to kind of show the power of air, the power of um, wind, and how much it can push back and forth. We have a little hovercraft. Before we get to that, I just want everybody out there to try this. Wheel your hand back and forth. You can probably feel some air pushing against your hand. Ask yourself, do you think air could actually lift someone like myself or someone like Michelle right off the ground? Well, we're going to find that out. Michelle is going to move on to our hovercraft as we change onto our hovercraft picture here. Uh, yes, or a check mark in the chat. If you think this is doomed, you can put the word doomed in the chat. That will be fine. We will find out what will happen as we go through here. All right, we're going to invite all of you to give us a little countdown. You can put a three, you can put a two, 
You can put a one in the chat. Ready? Three, two, one, activate! <laughs> shell comes off of there you'll see we were able to use the power of air to move things around uh, the air was actually able to lift things up to lift the shell right off the ground there air could also be used wind power to turn turbines we're going to be talking a little bit about that a little bit later on uh, were there any other energy sources that had come up there fabio any questions or suggestions to that question so we got geothermal geothermal that's great using the heat of the earth itself to generate and turn these turbines Hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity. I'm going to show you, these are great because a lot of these ones you've been talking about are what we describe as renewable energy sources. Uh, Michelle, have you heard of non-renewable? Or I guess you must talk about that in some of your presentations. Yes, yes, yeah. I have heard of non-renewable. Yeah, so oftentimes when that's going on, people are burning things. So I'm going to show you, if we can close up over here, I'm going to try and burn a little something this way. All right, now I'm not sure which camera we're on here, so oh, we're just on me. Perfect. So, I have a little piece of paper here. Um, oh, Fabio, who would you say is the furthest away person we've got from all those who reported where they were joining us from? From here, I would say, why not Whistler? Whistler, okay. We are gonna do a little bit of scientific measurements, but rather than counting in uh, Mississippis or things, we're gonna count in one Whistler, two Whistler, three Whistler, like that. Now you'll notice I put on my safety goggles, and I'm actually gonna grab a little fire extinguisher behind me as well because we are using some fire for this demonstration we always want to make sure we're doing things safely i'm going to take some tongs here and i'm going to take a lighter now another way that you can generate force to turn around a turbine to generate electrical energy is by burning something this is what they call a non-renewable fuel because eventually you will have burned up all the different things you can use but here i have a little piece of paper I just want you to help me count one Whistler, two Whistler. Count until you think it's completely burned up. Okay? We're going to start together and one Whistler, two Whistler, three. Hmm. All right. Feel free to put in the chat the number of Whistlers you got in your class or at your home. How much you think we're finished there? I'll see if I can show a little bit up there. We did, didn't even burn all of it there. There's a little bit of ash. You probably saw a little bit of smoke coming off. This is what we call incomplete combustion. Combustion meaning fire, but in this case, we haven't actually burned all of it up. Some of it is left behind. Uh, Fabio, any answers there? How many whistlers did they get as they were coming through? Right now, I've got 3.5. 3.5 whistlers. I think that's a very, very effective and very precise measurement you've got there. I like that. Uh, I'm going to try a different burning fuel. This one is called nitrocellulose, also known as flash paper. Same thing. We're going to count whistlers. Ready. One Whistler hmm. <laughs> All right, feel free to put your count in the chat there. Now you notice a couple of things. This seems to be a more complete combustion, more of it's burned up. If I hold it up close there, you might see there's a little piece just where it was touched by the tongs. But anytime you burn something, some of the side effects are it's still making gases. It's still making um, carbon dioxide and things that are being produced from that. And of course, it gets used up. Now, we were talking Let's get Michelle and I back in here about hydroelectricity. I have a feeling you know things about this, Michelle. I do, I do. <laughs> have you had a chance to tour any big hydroelectric plants and things like that? Yes, I actually got the opportunity to visit the inside of our Rebel Stoke Dam. Wow. And it was super cool. Well, what was the coolest thing you can remember from up there? The coolest thing was taking the elevator all the way up to the top and being able to see how big the dam really is. Nice. Uh, if any of you have ever visited a uh, hydroelectric dam or been up where they generate electricity using water, feel free to put that in the chat. Uh, right now, we're going to show you a friend of ours from BC Hydro who can tell us a little bit more about how we make electricity out of water. This is my friend Juman. Take it away, Juman. Hi everyone, my name is Juman. I'm an electrical engineer at BC Hydro and today I'm going to show you where electricity comes from. So we've all seen one of these before. It's just your standard electrical outlet. They're really everywhere. They're in your home, they're in your school. And if you've ever used a phone or a computer before, you know just how these guys work. So you just plug it in, 
and voila, your device is getting powered up. Now, have you ever wondered where your electricity comes from or how your electricity is actually generated? Well, in order to find out, I'm going to take you on a journey to the source. Let's go! So, there's many ways of generating electricity, but here in British Columbia, most of our energy is hydroelectric. Hydro means water, and that's why we're starting here. I'm here in Mission, BC, and this is Stave Lake. Stave Lake is actually a reservoir. If you look at this lake from above, it's actually connected to another lake, connected through a really narrow passage. More importantly, there's a drop in elevation there. Let's go check it out. This huge concrete wall is called a dam, and it's built right in between that narrow passage between the two lakes. Believe it or not, dams like this one are where most of our electricity comes from in BC. Now, you might be wondering how a concrete wall and a reservoir can generate electricity. Well, let me show you. The reservoir is basically a big pool of rainwater. The more it rains, the more the reservoir fills up. The dam keeps the water from spilling out, but it also has pipes that let some water flow through. These pipes are called penstocks, and they're actually pretty huge. Like, you could fit a school bus inside of them. The water flows down these pipes very fast, just from the force of gravity. The penstocks are connected to machines called turbines, and the rushing water from the pipes spins the blades inside of them. These blades are connected to a machine that turns that spinning motion into electrical energy. So if you look at the whole process, it starts with the pull of gravity, which gets converted into kinetic energy, which gets converted into electrical energy. And that's how we generate hydroelectricity. Thank you so much, Juman. That's really interesting stuff up there. I want to thank you all for your comments in the chat, too. They're so helpful to us. I understand we've got a lot of classrooms watching, so it's great to have you here. Uh, if you want to put the name of your classroom, your division number, uh, what uh, grades we have watching, we'd love to know more about who's joining us for the show today. Thank you also for your feedback. We understand that some of the audio was a little bit muffled. We're going to try and make sure that's a little bit louder for you, but if there's ever any problems with that, do let us know and we'll always try to make adjustments. Now, we want to show you something. If you don't happen to have a hydroelectric dam in your backyard, there are ways you can make these kind of turbines. And Michelle, you've got something like that that you can show us. Yes, exactly. So we have a watch a turbine spin demo here, and I'm just going to quickly explain what I'm about to do. So. I have a jug of water and I am going to pour this into this pop plastic pop container and this is going to symbolize the pen stock. And as I pour it, it's going to spin a turbine which is located inside. So that's just something you've cut up the pop bottle to make little turbine -y things? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Things that you probably have at home. And it's going to raise this object on the left and this is demonstrating the turbine spinning and us generating electricity in a hydroelectric dam. So let's take a look. I'm going to get a better grip here and see what happens. The yellow thing is going up. Ooh, ah. There we go. So that's how we create electricity. A little bit simplified, but if you're interested in doing this activity at home, you can visit our Power Smart for Schools website, which is schools.bchydro.com. Nice. That is really cool. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, I love that project. As Michelle mentioned, you can go to the schools.bchydro.com website for things like that. You can check out the uh, scienceworld.ca workshop or <laughs> website as well. We have lots of resources of things you can try at home. Just before the show, we were actually tuning up that turbine. And it's always fun to take something, invent it, and then find out, okay, what if we add more little propeller blades? What if we change the angle of those? Uh, I love inventing. I love tinkering with things to find different ways to put it together. Earlier in the show, people were talking about solar power. And it's interesting because a lot of the different types of energy we talk about really trace back to the sun. Even hydropower, when you heat up water, it evaporates, it goes up in the clouds, and then it falls down and we can use the power of that to turn these turbines. Now, there's two terms we talk about. We talk about potential energy, something having the potential to start moving when you put things up high, and then kinetic energy when they actually start to move. If I lift these goggles off the table and then drop them, they have the potential now, and now they begin to move. Now, I'm a scientist, but I'm also a person who likes to do weird things. 
So rather than just dropping goggles on a table, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to explore potential energy by dropping things off of Science World? We're going to show you that in just a moment, but first I did want to check back with Fabio. We'd asked a question before, have anyone had visited a hydro dam or visited somewhere where they generate electricity? Have we had any stories from that? Yes, we have folks who visited Stave Falls Dam. Oh, Stave Falls, if you get a chance. Yes, Stave Falls just outside the lower mainland. It's a beautiful old hydroelectric plant. And there's also lots and lots of great information in there. It's kind of like a science world setup where you can learn more about how it's generated. Uh, any other highlights in the chat you wanted to pass along? Also, Hoover Dam, we have folks visiting. Oh, Hoover Dam, yes, the, the big one down in the States. Exactly. And also, we have grades two, three, grade seven, grade one in Powell River. Wow, grade two, three, seven, grades one from Powell River. Hello, Powell River. I know you well. Our high school football team, or not that football, basketball team used to play Courtney versus Powell River. Anyway. Let's show you. In fact, I have a question for you. You can put it in the chat. I can't guarantee you that we have recordings of this, but if you have an idea of this is something that would be fun to throw off of Science World, let us know what you dream of throwing off of Science World someday. We'll see if we covered some of that. Once again, let me show you the potential energy. I'm going to show you how high I had to go to climb up the side of Science World. So here's our little video there. There is me climbing up, carrying all the things. There's a lot of staircases going all all the way up. And that's actually not the top of the science world. Some people would say we'd be on the top of the ball. I thought about doing that, but then realized if I throw it off the top there, I have no idea where it's landing and no idea who it's landing on. So I wanted to be a little more careful than that. Uh, Michelle, anything you would love to throw off science world someday? A few things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll leave that to, to be determined. Uh, Fabio, have we had any answers from our audience out there of things they would be interested to see? Somebody suggested a car. A, a car? <laughs> well, I, I, I applaud your idea. I'm, I'm not quite that strong to carry the car up those staircases, but yeah. All right, what else have we got? A piano. A piano? There again. Um, it's, you, you have so much respect for my strength. And a bowling ball. A bowling ball. These are all great ideas, none of which I did. But I will tell you a little bit about what we did. Um, on the bowling ball idea, I did think something big and round would be fun. So we got a watermelon. I want to show you what it looks like when you take a watermelon. We've got all that potential energy. It's turning into kinetic energy. It's coming down. That's what a watermelon looks like dropping off the side of Science World. A few years ago, we actually had an exhibit that was all about gravity. Uh, you may have heard probably five or 10 years ago now, uh, there was someone from the Stratus Project who did the highest parachute jump ever done in the world and we were able to have their capsule and some of their equipment on display here and we thought we'd drop some other things off science world so we tried a, an old computer keyboard broken keyboard that's what it looks like when it hits we had an actually broken computer uh this one was not being in use anymore so building the anticipation a little bit here our computer is coming it's coming it's just rebooting it's doing an update and we wanted to give one more shot of what it looked like for those watermelons. Seeing all that kinetic energy come from the potential energy, the same as the water being evaporated, going into the penstock, turning those huge turbines to make so much energy. Uh, this one will be, imagine if you were lying on the floor next to that watermelon just as it landed. Uh, again, if you want to put any reactions in the chat, any reactions, any emojis, or if, if you're thinking, like, I would like to see more down the road, perhaps a future show will bring a car and a piano onto the roof of Science World. But right now, one more look at some watermelons. Coming. Blah. Something else I will point out is I had some nice tarps underneath there, but when you're doing science, you learn new things as your experiment goes, and I thought it would be easier to clean them up on the tarp a watermelon spreads a lot further than I thought. All right, Michelle, I think it's time for energy coach time. I think so too. Uh, oh, yes. Are we ready to get started? Yeah, we've got our uh, little game show quiz going on here. Perfect. So yes, as your energy coach, I thought it would be cool to see how much you all remember about how we're powered by water here in BC. So first question. Electricity that is made from the power of falling water is called what? A, turbine power, 
B, water power, C, hydro energy, or D, hydroelectricity. Ah, interesting. So we're going to actually give you a chance in the Facebook chat or in the Facebook poll to put your answer there. I know Fabio has popped something up. Uh, if you're in a classroom, if you want to decide amongst yourselves or have a vote there, whether it's A, B, C, or D, turbine power, water power, hydroelectricity, or, hyd or hydro energy, or hydroelectricity. All right. Now, do we need to close the poll? How does this magic work, Fabio? I'm curious to see what our results are. So far, hydroelectricity is winning. Hydroelectricity is winning. What, what are the um, percentages like? So 70% hydroelectricity, 70% hydro energy, 4% water power, and 8% turbine power. Okay. Well, Michelle, coach? Yes. Well, the answer is D, hydroelectricity. So it sounds like most of you know your stuff. Nice. All right, I think we have another question here. So number two, falling water is which type of energy? A, chemical energy, B, magnetic energy, C, kinetic energy, or D, light energy? All right, we're gonna get you to put your answers in the poll there as well. Um, if for any reason the poll is not working with whatever device you've got there, you can also type that in the chat as well. Uh, make your choice, make your decision there. Uh, if, if you've gotten one of these correct, feel free to go, ah. and if, even if you haven't got it correct, feel free to give yourself a big pat on the back. That's a big part of science, is looking through things, making predictions, learning from what we find out. All right, Fabio, what is leading currently? Kinetic energy with 95%. 95% for kinetic energy. You know what? I'm going to put some credit to watermelons for how well that sunk in for you. <laughs> All right, we're going to find out, though. Coach Michelle? Yeah, sounds like, again, you all were correct. C, kinetic energy is the right answer. Nice. All right, what's up next here? We're back to me. Well, we wanted to try a little something more about how this electricity gets generated, show you a little bit more of what it's like inside one of these hydroelectric dams. If you haven't had a chance to go to Stave Falls or Revelstoke or up to Hoover Dam, our friend Jumin is gonna show you inside again. So Jumin, show us what you got. We have a chance to take a look inside a real powerhouse. Let's check it out. This is the top of a generator. Most of the generator is underneath below. You have water coming from the reservoir, through the penstock, and into the generator underneath. Isn't that cool? through many tiny little doors. And this pen stop is full of water. You can hear how much energy this water has. Hi, we are back. That was exciting. I'm excited by what you've got for us here. What's happening now, Michelle? Yeah, so we're actually going to compete to see who can light up their light bulb tower the fastest. Oh, so there's a blue one and a green one. Yeah, and there might be, you know, a key difference between the two other than the color, but maybe we'll save that for later. Okay, well, I want a couple of predictions in the chat, if you like. First, just based on what you see of the two of us, who do you think will be able to generate more electrical energy? Uh, Michelle or Brian? Uh, also, if you have a prediction about what might be different about the towers, you can put that in the chat as well. Uh, shall we get them to count us down for our race here? I think so. So this, if we're turning a turbine, kind of like the water coming down, spinning the turbine? Exactly. Same idea. Okay. Count it down. Three, two, one. <laughs> was accurate. That's good there. If it was not accurate, that's all right as well. I know I have tiny little stick insect arms here. Yes. So uh, this was rigged a little bit. Okay. And uh, maybe we do want to get some of the guesses, I guess, before I reveal the answer. Well, yeah. Actually, Fabio, do we have any... Well, first, what were the predictions out there about who would win? Michelle. Oh, Michelle, what? <laughs> so much Michelle. But, you know, I, if I had been there, I would have said the same. 
All right, and about what was different? Does anyone have an idea? Somebody suggested that Michelle had a better turbine. Oh, that's a really good idea. Like a more efficient turbine, a better way of generating the energy. Mm. Michelle, let me ask you, is your turbine different from my turbine? No. Oh, that makes me feel worse about my <laughs> arms. All right, any other predictions about what might have been different? Um, that Michelle's younger. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that is also, well, I'm going to, yes, I'm, I'm going to pretty safely say it. that is an accurate prediction, but I disagree that that's why I lost. <laughs> All right, any other factors? Somebody suggested that Green had LED lights. Oh, oh. Michelle? That person was absolutely correct. So yes, the green light bulb tower has LED light bulbs, whereas the blue tower had incandescent light bulbs. And so LEDs are actually 75% more efficient than incandescents. So incandescents actually give off a lot of heat, so it's wasted energy. So this is why it's important to be power smart with you know what we use and uh, make sure we use less. Nice. Well, I understand, uh, Coach Michelle, you might have another game show for us. I do. So moving on to our next topic, we're going to see how much you know about conservation. All right. So first question. Um, of these light sources, which uses the least energy? A, incandescent, B, LED, C, fluorescent, or D, halogen? Four different kinds of light bulbs coming up there. All right, so just like we did before, uh, you can put your answer, you can talk amongst your class, which do you think it's going to be, A, B, C, or D? Uh, just because I like to mix things up, Fabio, what answer is in third place? Currently. Right now, fluorescent and halogen are tied in third place. Fluorescent and halogen tied for third? What Tied at what percentage? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It seems like you have a pretty clear idea of what's going on here. Uh, what is winning and at what percentage, Fabio? LED with 96%. LED with 96%. All right, Coach Michelle, let us know. Yes, B LED is the correct answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, question coming in. Yeah, Nico is asking how do you measure the efficiency of LED and incandescent fluorescent? How do you measure the efficiency of these different ones coming through there? That is an excellent question, That's Michelle. That's a really good question. And I'm not sure the technical side, but for us um, as you know, customers or as somebody at home, you can view your electricity online. So maybe you have all incandescent light bulbs in your house and you switch them to LED. If you have an online account with BC Hydro, you can actually look at the difference um, on your something called a consumption graph to see how much your electricity usage drops. So how exactly it's measured, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but you can definitely test that out yourself. Yeah, I would suspect it's something to do with the output of light versus the output of heat, measuring the energy there. But I love that you can go on and change one of those variables in your house. You can just change something simple and see what the difference is on your hydrant. Exactly. All right. Coach Michelle, what is next? Next question, why are LED light bulbs able to produce as much light energy as incandescent bulbs while using less energy? A, LEDs have extra strong battery power. B, LEDs produce less heat when creating light. C, LEDs produce more heat when creating light. Or D, LEDs have a special bright light coating. Okay, so our answers are coming in A, B, C, or D on there. I, I like the idea of a special bright light coating. I would like to have a special bright light coating. Uh, I'm curious, uh, do we have some results already, Fabio? Yeah, so far LEDs produce less heat when creating light is winning. All right. What is uh, second place? LEDs have a special bright light coating. Yay, special bright light coating! <laughs> okay, Coach Michelle, yeah. tell us what we got. The correct answer is B, LEDs produce less heat when creating light. Oh, very fun. All right, is there one more question for us? Yes, there is one more. So last question, to save hot water, how long should you take in the shower? A, five minutes, B, 10 minutes, C, 15 minutes, or D, 20 minutes? Okay, all of our clean, clean people out there, when you're in the shower, how long is the most energy efficient shower you can take? I'm glad five seconds is not on there. I don't feel you're gonna get very clean that way. All right. Is there another tie of any kind out there, Fabio? 15 and 20 in last place. Okay. Uh, first place is? Five minutes. And second place, I guess, is 10. Coach Michelle? 
correct answer is five minutes. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, next time you're in the shower, check the time before you go in, check the time coming out, see if you can save some energy there. I guess that could be another thing if you adjust your shower time to look at it, that hydrograph month over month. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Coach Michelle. I'm going to come back over to me now, put my fancy goggles on, and I'm going to put some fancy gloves on as well. Because we want to talk a little bit about energy efficiency, and I have a very fun demonstration that I love to do that involves some of this. Now, this over here, I'm going to turn it around because I think I gave away the question I'm going to ask by showing you the label there. But in here, I have some liquid that is very, very cold. Uh, this is liquid nitrogen. I'm going to pour some of that into this big tank next to me here. I'm wondering, Jeff, can we do a picture in a picture? Can we get a close-up one here as well? Let's see what happens as we come through. So there's our close-up. Now, the liquid nitrogen is cold. And generally, when you put something into something that's very, very cold like that, it's going to shrink. And in the case of something like wire, the wire is going to line up in nice little rows and, in fact, become a little bit more efficient with the little molecules inside. Now, I want to show you this light bulb I have here. I have a little dimmer switch next to me. I'm going to try and turn that up until we can just see a little bit of light there. Let me just bring it up so we can see if we can see up on the camera there. Uh, I'll turn it up a little bit higher here. Just going to check my dial to make sure I'm in the right spot. There we go. How about there? Add in the gel. You know what? The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. Oh, no. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to plug it in. <laughs> this is another great force of energy efficiency. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, watch, we have a little technical slide there, which will come on as I'm briefly recalculating and plugging something in. We're back, proving science is an iterative process, and look, we even have our little thing up in the window there, so you can see the close-up as we go along. Okay, <laughs> once again, I'm going to show you our light bulb. We're going to turn up the power. We're turned on. We're plugged in. We're in there. There we go. Okay. And you see a little bit of a glow on there. If you can see a little bit of a glow, you can put yes or glow or thumbs up in the chat. I'm going to add into our big tank here a little bit more of the liquid nitrogen. I'm actually going to bring this camera up a bit so that you can see the bulb. Because this bulb that I have, the electrical energy doesn't just go straight through this wire right into the bulb. You notice along the bottom here, it's wrapped in tons and tons of wire. And all that energy has to go through here before it gets in there. When I put my hand here, it actually feels a little bit warm because not all of that energy is making it here. Just like we saw with the LEDs, if some of that energy gets turned into heat, you don't get as much efficiency with the light. Now watch that bulb there as we cool things down. And if you notice anything different starting to happen with that bulb, make a note in the chat. I haven't changed where the setting is there. We've got the same amount of voltage. Theoretically, we're sending out the same amount of energy. But more of that energy should be reaching our light bulb. So this is the kind of thing people are looking at is how can I make devices more energy efficient? How can I make something like an incandescent bulb into an LED bulb? How can I take something like you'll see uh, washing machines, refrigerators, year over year, people are always looking at different ways to make them more efficient. Here again, Fabio, has anybody noticed anything different with our bulb? It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. Same amount of energy coming in, but more of it is reaching our light bulb as we get up to the top and more cool bubbles and things happening in our liquid nitrogen down below. All right, Fabio, how are we doing for time? So right now, we, it's 137. 137, you know what, there's one more quick thing I want to show you with the liquid nitrogen. It also relates to LEDs. And something that I just find, it's wonderful to find something surprising in science. Things that you expected to happen, things you didn't expect to happen, surprises coming out. I'm gonna put this down a little bit. I'm gonna show you I have a little LED that's on here on a little battery. I can turn that on and bring it by the camera there. 
if you can see what color it is or what color it looks like. It may be a little different on different people's screens, but type that in the chat. What color is my LED? Because now I'm going to put it into the liquid nitrogen and turn it on. Before we do that, like any good scientist experiment, we want to make a prediction. Michelle, do you have any predictions about what's going to happen? Hmm. I'm not sure. Not sure? That's okay. Uh, if you have predictions, you can write them in the chat. What could happen to our little bulb if we put it into the liquid nitrogen? I'll tell you a little bit of the history of this demonstration, too. When we were learning how to do this, figuring it out, I actually tried putting the battery inside. And what we found was batteries don't work when they get super, super cold. We've slowed down the little chemical reaction that was producing the electricity. But watch that LED, put it in the chat. What is different about this LED now when it gets cold? It was, what were the initial descriptions of the color? It was yellow, it was orange. Yellowy orange. And as we've got it in there, anybody we got a different answer coming out for what color we've got? Yeah, there's a cooler light. It's a cooler light. It's coming out a little bit green. So there's a little gap inside any LED that helps determine the color. When you cool it down, you change the size of that gap, and you get wonderful little changes like this, changing from yellow to green. Michelle, what are some other things people should remember when they're thinking about power around their house? Well, I think that they should remember to unplug things when they're done using them. Mm -hmm. That's one way to conserve energy. And just be mindful, know what uses electricity around your house and uh, try to use less. Yeah, unplugging, turning off the TV when you're done using it, closing yep. the fridge, many different things. Yep, uh, one of the great things that can save electricity in your home is the fact that most video games have a save feature. So you don't have to leave the whole system on overnight. Uh, video game systems, graphics cards, processing, they generate a lot of heat. This is why people spend so much money on cooling fans and such for those. Uh, we would love to hear more questions from you. If you have any questions about the demonstrations you've seen, the places we've been with Juman, some of the things that Michelle was showing us as uh, Coach Michelle, feel free to pipe them in the chat. Uh, we'd love to answer those for you. And as things are going on there, uh, I'm going to ask if we've got some questions from earlier. Yeah, Grace is asking how the liquid nitrogen affects the bulb. The bulb. Uh, Grace was asking, how does the liquid nitrogen affect the bulb? Now, there were a couple of different bulbs we used there. So for the regular old incandescent light bulb, what it did was it made the wires a better conductor of electricity. It helped line up. They call little particles called molecules inside. They lined up nicely, and it just allowed more of the energy to come through. For the second bulb, the one that turned from orange or from yellow to green, uh, it changed a little gap, it's just a little space. Another big thing you'll find when things get really, really cold is they actually get smaller. So. Hotter things tend to get larger, colder things tend to get a bit smaller, and changing the size of that gap just in the way that an LED produces its color, change the color coming out. Thank you, that's a wonderful question. And that was from Michelle. Um, where does our energy come from in BC, Cherry is asking? In BC? Yeah. Ah, so about 96% of the electricity that we generate comes from clean and renewable sources. So the biggest source is hydro or water. Mm -hmm. And that's also, we have a bit of wind and solar power as well. So the question about where the electricity comes from in BC. Yeah, and apologies if I didn't repeat the question before, they were asking about the bulb and how the bulb had worked on our first one. Uh, Emily from grade four is asking, where, where is the dam that Juman was at? Oh, where is the dam that Juman was at, was the question. Yeah, she was at State Falls, so that's the one in Mission. Yeah, do you know, is State Falls open currently? I know some places are open more or less hours. No, I don't believe it's open for visitors right now, but I would recommend checking our website for any updates because we do usually uh, offer tours, but it's been on a bit of a hold recently. Yeah. I've been a few times when it's open. I recommend it highly. It's a super, super cool place. Lori is asking if the green LED will turn back to yellow. Ah, oh, Lori was asking, will the green LED turn back to yellow? That is a super cool question. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask you first. Anybody out there, any of the classes watching, it's been a few minutes, we've had it out of the liquid nitrogen, it's warmed up a little bit. Put your prediction. Do you think it's gonna stay green? Do you think it's gonna go back to yellow? Do you think it's gonna do something else entirely? We're gonna find out there. Uh, I'm gonna find my magic button here. I'm just gonna check. I know it's been out long enough. I can do a quick little touch. You have to be careful with cold things because cold things can actually burn you as much as hot things. Yeah, it is not cold anymore. Uh, what are the predictions out there, Fabio? What do people think? That yes, you will go back to orange. We'll go back to orange. Let's find out. Bring it up close. 
And yes, it has gone back to our nice orange color. Great question, what a wonderful experiment. Any other questions for us there? We can take one or two more, I think. Yeah, Deborah's asking if the second energy includes plug-in charges being unplugged from their outlet. Oh, that sounds like a Mr. Coach Michelle question. Should you unplug your chargers from the outlet? Yes, you should. Any phone, tablet, charger, unplug them from the outlet to avoid standby power. So that they're, they're actually pulling power out of the outlet even when they're not charging something, just the fact that it's a charger. That's correct. Okay, it's good to know. All right, is there a last question for us there? Yeah, Candy is asking if um, there's a way to convert incandescent to fluorescent, um, incandescent or fluorescent light into LED. The way to convert the lights from one to the other. That is a super cool question. Michelle, do you know anything on that? I don't believe there's a way to convert. Uh, basically, when you're buying light bulbs, you just want to make sure that you're buying LEDs and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of them, the same socket that you would have used previously for an incandescent, you might be able to plug an LED in there. But the, uh, changing the bulb itself is it's, it's more technical than I could probably get into. Uh, something I discovered from putting some LED lights into my home as well is you do want to check the type of bulb that you've got there. Some of them work for dimming, some of them don't. Some of them are designed to be kind of lamps where things are open and there's a little bit more airflow. Some of them are designed better if it's in, inside an enclosed thing. So check that for sure. Right. And Naomi from grade 5 is asking, what happens if you don't unplug your devices? Ah, Naomi from grade 5. Coach Michelle, what happens if you don't unplug your device? Well, you'll be using more electricity, which might cause your power bill, I guess your parents, your guardian's power bill, to go a little bit higher. So you can save money and save electricity by unplugging. Yeah, and I think as, as more people move to BC too, just making sure there's enough power for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if you have other questions, feel free to send them in to us. We have our Facebook page. We have lots of different ways to communicate. Again, if you want to check in from schools or anywhere on the, some of the BC Hydro activities you can try at home or in the classroom, where can they find those? Yes, so for more activities about conservation and sustainability, visit our Power Smart for Schools website. So that's schools.bchydro.com. Nice. And again, you can always visit scienceworld.ca. We have lots of free downloadable resources there as well. And we're going to be doing another one of these in just about a month on May 13th. So please check in there again. Uh, check in all the time. We love to see what you're up to. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.